first things I always like to teach people is, so here's a sponge that I've soaked with water. And now, as you can see, there's nothing dripping out of it. This is the thinnest. You think, okay. But now if that pot was a little bit deeper, <clears throat> notice the water's coming out. And if it was deeper yet, gravity works against that water. So a shallow pot, gravity doesn't have as much influence to push that water through the pot. On a deeper pot, gravity is going to help start pushing that water through. The other thing with bonsai is all bonsai pots have holes in them because we rely on good drainage. The health of our trees is really dependent on the health of the roots in our trees that we, that we are training. And we use a high aggregate soil. So in, act in actuality, as you can see, this basically looks like gravel. There's no actual dirt in it whatsoever. I've used that for most of my 27 years I've been doing bonsai. Again, what that does is it lets water flow freely flow through and oxygen can come back into the root system. That's what gives us a healthy tree. So as I said, we're going to work with this little forest here. So I did some preparatory work the last couple days and I'm going to just sort of set these aside. keep them in somewhat of an order so I remember where they were. So if you look at the bottom of this pot, you know we got four bigger drainage holes, some other holes that wire can go through. And I also created a grid work inside here because with all these individual trees, typically our trees are wired into the pot. Unlike a tree that's growing in your yard, it has a tap root. That taproot goes deep as it can get. That's what holds that tree to the ground. That's what creates its stability. Well, in an inch and a half, two inch deep pot, it doesn't have any chance to do that. So we mechanically wire them into the pot so they're stable. And why do we wire them? Because when the wind is moving that tree, all those little fine roots are being pulled around and so they keep breaking and tearing. We want that tree to sit stable and not move much, therefore our roots continue to, to prosper. So as we build a forest, and what I did is I worked through some of these trees. I did some of the trimming yesterday. And uh, as you saw what I had lined up there, you know, putting together a forest is like uh, taking that uh, class picture or family reunion picture, you know, everybody's got to be in the picture. Of course, you get your ugly cousins to go to the back, you know, you don't want them right up front. Same thing is with a forest when we're building a forest. The neat thing about forestry, unlike a specimen tree, we got several trees in here. It doesn't have to be flawless because it blends in with everybody else. When you have a specimen tree, this is the only thing you're looking at, so every little flaw that it has are glaring at you. So here's the root ball that's on this guy. Now I've worked through some of these other ones, and this one I hadn't because I wanted to show you what we do. But basically, I'm going to go through and get all the soil that's in here already out. Just using a, a bamboo chopstick. The nice thing about these, these are reasonably available at your local Chinese restaurant. Take an extra pair home and you have a tool already. You didn't have to pay anything for it. And you see me sort of poking, but the soil just keeps coming out. Again, I'm not trying to rip and tear because that's going to tear on the roots. Just trying to work everything free. Mind if we ask questions? What's that? Mind if I ask questions? Okay, now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to feel with my hands and what I'm looking for, where is the bottom of that root? In other words, what's my limitation for, yeah. 
You know, do I have something that's not going to let me get this tree as deep as I'd like to get it? So here's the main root structure that was on, that's attached to this trunk. But I've got all these roots around it. So to give myself even as much as another half an inch, I'm going to go in here and cut off a chunk of this root that's down here. Here's a screen that they had in the root system. Now, I will caution everyone that's watching this. This really isn't the time of year to be doing this, but this should have been done about a month or so ago, but unfortunately that's not when our show was. So the reason I'll get away with it is because I'm confident in knowing the aftercare that's gonna be necessary for this tree to survive, which means after this forest is put together, for the next week or two, it's going to probably get some morning sun, and by noon, it's going to be in the shade to let the tree recover from what's going on here today. And then after about a month, we should see that the tree is hopefully moving forward, and at that point, then we can start working it out to where it can be out in the sun a little longer during the day. <laughs> So again, I'm just finding anything that wants to go down is going to impede me from getting this thing as low as I can in this planter. So I've already made prunes to these trees were probably had leaves probably another six, eight inches out. So I've cut all that back and pruned other branches back on them. So I have a pretty good idea of where it is. And the grid work that you see in here, what that's gonna allow me to do is wire this tree easily to that grid because as I get seven trees in here, they all start falling one way or the other. And we typically use aluminum wire. It comes in different sizes. So for this guy here, I'm just going to run a set of wires just over this root system. They'll tie it into that grid. 